what you need to know about Iceland's new volcano, including not to go near it, and more in this episode of the Reykjavik News Desk. Okay, so I know that I said that the Reykjavik News Desk is a twice-weekly show, and that is true, but, but some important updates came up in the wake of this new volcano that we have, and I've got nothing better to do, so let's get into it. The volcano erupted at 1640 Icelandic time yesterday, and it's at a location known as Litlihrutur, which literally means Little Ram, which is pretty ironic considering the nature of this eruption. That is to say, the eruption fissure itself is some 900 meters long. That's much larger than the eruption last year and the year before that, and it's emitted a great deal of lava and toxic gases although things have calmed down significantly over the night, which we'll get to later. We have even more live feeds of the eruption site now, and some reporters got some great footage of this eruption, which I'll hook you up with later, because that's about as close to the eruption as we're going to get for the time being. And by that I mean that the police last night closed down the area completely. In fact, Civil Protection held a press conference last night in which they practically begged people to stay away from the eruption area. So... Remember in the last video, all those tips for tourists I gave about visiting the eruption site? Just put a pin in that for right now. Now, this eruption is still very new, and it's uncertain how big it's going to get or if more fissures are going to open up, but the main reason why the area is being shut down is because of the poisonous gases that are coming out of the earth. One of the big ones is sulfur dioxide. And if you've ever extinguished a match, you know exactly what this stuff smells like, and boy, is it toxic. I mean, if it gets in your eyes and nose and lungs, it can be very burning and irritating. And in higher concentrations, it can be fatal. But mostly it's just an extremely irritating gas that you absolutely do not want to be breathing in. Another distinguishing characteristic of sulfur dioxide is, boy, can it travel. I mean, I live about 30 kilometers away from the eruption sites. And when the wind was blowing right... It would still get into my place and it would you know, burn my eyes and like cause me to cough a lot and get all up in my sinuses. And in fact, they issued an advisory late last night that people in both Reykjanes and the capital area close their windows and turn off their ventilation systems on account of this gas. Now, the sting from sulfur dioxide is a blessing, though. Because another gas that's emitted from eruption sites is carbon monoxide, which is odorless and colorless and tasteless and extremely deadly. Fortunately, it's also pretty heavy, so it's not going to be traveling very far from the eruption site at all. But if you're at the site itself and you're in like a a lowland depression area near the eruption site, it can get to you without you even knowing it. And that's another big reason why they're trying to keep people away from the eruption site. And those are just two of the gases to be concerned about. There are others, and I'm sure more scientifically minded people than myself will be able to explain what those are. But for now, just rest assured, toxic gases come out of eruptions. And so that's the biggest reason why they're asking people to stay away from the area. Although they're also asking people to stay away from the area because things are still a little unpredictable right now on the ground. Not that this closure has deterred some tourists and even some locals from visiting the area. There are some people who even like slept in their cars near the eruption site, waiting for the opportunity to be the very first to get there. Now, I can appreciate this sense of adventure, but unless you're an earth scientist or otherwise somebody who has the proper equipment and backup on hand, stay away from fresh eruption sites. I, I shouldn't even have to say that. Like, I can appreciate wanting to be there and wanting to be first, but it's a very dangerous area. We don't close down eruption sites just for the fun of it, you know. We have a good reason to do so. And if your own physical safety isn't enough, just know that if you flout these measures and go to the site anyway, you will be on the news here. The entire country will see you, judging you, laughing at you. So if the threat of grave injury or even death isn't enough to keep you away from the site, maybe shame is. Now, before you lose hope, do know that this closure is just a temporary measure. Magnus Tumi Gudmundsson, who is a professor of geophysics, was telling reporters just this morning, Friday morning, that the volcano has already calmed down considerably. It's not spewing as much lava and there's not as much gas coming out of it. It's a much bigger eruption than the previous ones, but it is considerably less powerful 
than it was last night anyways. So with that in mind, know that there will be, in all likelihood, a chance to visit this eruption site while lava is spewing out of the ground and making very pretty and very photogenic lava fountains. Until then, there are a number of live feeds that you can check out, and I've linked to those in the description. Bear in mind that some of them are going to be filled with smoke because eruptions do emit um, vapor and smoke and gases. And depending on which way the wind is blowing, a particular feed might just give you a wall of, of what looks like smoke. So try all the feeds. See which one works best. Also, if you are planning on flying to Iceland, do not despair. This eruption is not expected to affect any flights to and from the country. Furthermore, it doesn't look like the eruption is going to get anywhere near either of the roads that go between the airport and the rest of the country. And that leads me to my next point. Even when the eruption calms down enough to where you will be able to visit, you're still going to have your, your work cut out for you here. Like, I'll be honest with you. I never heard of Litlihrutur until yesterday. Okay, there's mountains and hills all over this country, thousands of them. They all have names. I can't be expected to know all of them. So I looked it up. Where is it? So here's a map. This is the airport, and this is roughly where the eruption site is. This is a super long trek, okay? So when, when the green light is given by the proper authorities and the eruption site is open again, you're going to want to pack a lot of food. You're going to want to have proper boots. You're going to want to have clothes for any particular weather condition and get an early start if you're going to intending to get down there during the day. Now, if you don't think you're up for that, just don't go. And if you can't get a babysitter, don't bring your little kids. Just err on the side of caution here. Trust me, you won't regret it. Now, as I said, there's live streams in the description, but I've also linked to this fantastic article from Vistur. And you'll want to check out the second video in the Vistur article, the second video. In that video, you will witness reporter Christian Maur Unason and cameraman Sigurjón Gudni Olason flying in a helicopter over the eruption site. And they got some amazing footage. You don't need to understand Icelandic to be able to appreciate it. It's really fantastic footage. Highly recommend checking it out. And as always, the geeky, sciencey stuff can be found on the English language page of the Icelandic Met office, which I've also linked down below. So the bottom line here is this. The eruption is happening. It's ongoing. You can watch live streams of it. You can read about the science of it. But you cannot go anywhere near it just yet. Just yet. But rest assured that when it's opened up again, I will let you know. And even then, you should exercise caution. To underline this point, I wanted to bring up another news story, a related news story, which is our projections for tourism in Iceland this year. And this is expected to be a record year for tourism. Um, the projections are that some 2.3 to 2.4 million tourists will be arriving in Iceland this year. And this is before the eruption was even factored into the equation. When you consider that we're a country that hasn't even hit 400,000 people yet, yeah, we're going to feel the effects of, of tourism this year for sure. And if you're going to be one of these 2.3 to 2.4 million tourists, don't be like these guys. These guys were spotted at Greinisfjara Beach, and I've talked about Greinisfjara Beach before. Um, it is in South Iceland. It's a black sand beach. Even though black sand beaches circle the entire country, for some reason, this beach is very popular. But it's also a very dangerous place. It's the site of a sneaker wave, which is a very sudden, unpredictable, and large wave that can just slap up onto the beach and pull you into the water. And at this area, there's a very dangerous riptide. In fact, it has claimed five lives in the past six years. All over this site, there are very large and prominent signs in multiple languages telling people to stay away from the water, let alone swim in it. And as you might imagine, some people who are at the site, in fact, told these guys, hey, don't swim at Greinisfjara. What are you doing? And they were just like, we can do what we want. And so they did. As I said before, now the entire country is laughing at them and shaking their heads at them. And this kind of behavior tracks, sadly enough. I've talked to a lot of tour guides who have taken tourists to this area. And in fairness to the tour guides, they will give multiple warnings to their tourists 
like, hey, don't go near the water. They'll go out of the bus with the tourists. They'll go to the beach with the tourists. But they've told me that when they've seen some people, some people wander too close to the water and they've called to them saying, hey, that's very dangerous. Come back away from the water. Sometimes people will ignore them or even get argumentative with them. Again, this is a beach that has claimed five lives in the past six years. Okay. Frankly, I don't even know why it's still open. I think it's a very dangerous place. And I think there are prettier places that you can see in Iceland and you should maybe not visit Grenisfjara. But if you do, of course, stay very close to stay very far away rather from the shoreline. My point in all this is that, of course, Iceland is a very beautiful country, but it can also be a very dangerous country in terms of the natural environment. Whether you're visiting a notorious beach or the site of a volcanic eruption, use common sense. Abide the signs that you may see in the area. Listen to the guides that are there that are trying to help keep you safe. And most of all, if you're unsure, err on the side of caution. We want you to keep coming back. And the beauty of this country will always be here. So that's all I have for you today at the Reykjavik News Desk. As I said, this is normally a twice-weekly show, but I thought these were extraordinary circumstances. But for, for now, I'll hopefully be able to get back to the, the regular twice-weekly schedule, which is a lot more comfortable for me, to say the least. However, I wanted to point out that there's two upcoming events that I'm very happy to share with you, and I hope that you mark them on your calendar. The first is that on July 17th, I'll be releasing my single topic video, which is about the cultural and political divide between urban and rural Icelanders. Now, this was a topic that was decided by a viewer poll that's on my Patreon, and the patrons there decided which single topic I was to report on. This is the one that won, and I'm very excited about it. Secondly, secondly, also mark in your calendar, July 22nd, I'm going to be hosting my next Ask Me Anything session. And this is a really great time. Um, yes, people do ask me questions during AMAs, but mostly it's just a chance for us and the patrons to hang out and have a laugh together. It's always a lot of fun, and I really hope to see you there. So if you want to get in on either one of these things and more by becoming a patron, the link to my Patreon is in the description below, which reminds me, I want to thank Corinne Vasquez, Marion Ward, Christopher Hunter, Marion Moores, Kimberly McDaniel, Iceman98, and Octavia Hrund-Jonsdottir for being patrons on the $20 level, Ian Kingsley and Laura Johnson for being patrons on the $15 level, and Christine Trowbridge, Hafstein, Him and Leomi Reginuson, Stephen Ellis, and Vivi Carvalho Schaffner for being patrons on the $10 level. You folks rock. That's all for me at the Reykjavik News Desk. Be good to each other.